Good evening. Good evening and welcome. My name is Emily Mead. I am the Director of Philanthropy for the New Bedford Whaling Museum and it is my pleasure to thank you all for joining us this evening, an evening many years in the making. <laughs> Um, I want to particularly thank all of our members in the audience. Uh, members, a membership is what helps to ensure that the museum continues running programs like this um, and all of our rich slate of exhibitions, rotating exhibitions. So thanks, special thanks to our members. Uh, if you are not yet a member, you would have an opportunity to become one by filling out one of these cards at our front desk or hopping online. In addition to unlimited free admission, members also enjoy 50% off all ticketed events access to special members programs, and 10% off in the gift shop, which always matters around the holiday season. So special thanks to members. Um, tonight, we are here to learn and to celebrate. Uh, New Bedford and the South Coast have a long shared history with the Azores uh, and Portugal and strong cultural connections, and we are delighted that these cultural connections have brought Manuel Costa and his son Fran Francisco, Franci Fran I can't say it wrong, I'm a brute, Francisco, thank you, um, here to New Bedford to, to speak and to perform uh, for us this evening. Um, we're grateful, of course, to, uh, to the Costas for traveling all the way to New Bedford, across most of an ocean to New Bedford, um, and we're grateful also to the individuals and institutions that have supported this evening and made this night possible. Um, the program is supported by Brown University's Department of Portuguese and Brazilian Studies. We're grateful to Anesimo Almeida, who is our champion there. And of course, the UMass Dartmouth Center for Portuguese Studies and Culture. Uh, and our champion there is Paula Noversa. Um, so really grateful. <laughs> I hear a smattering of applause. Yeah, let's give them a big hand. Thank you to both. Again, we're grateful to the Costas for traveling to be here and speak and perform for us. And I also want to thank the New Bedford Symphony Orchestra for its support and specifically uh, for uh, the support of the musicians Daniel Nerger, who will be on piano, and Nick Francesi, who will be on bass. Thank you very much. Again, thank you all for joining us this evening, and I will turn it over to Manuel. Good evening. Thank you. Before speaking English, um, I would uh, speak in Portuguese. Only one, two minutes only. My English is very bad, so I apologize. Forgive. Um, é uma honra, é um gosto, é um prazer, é uma, uma, grande, uma grande alegria que, que não tem a ver com o cargo, não tem, não tem a ver com a função, não tem a ver com aquilo que eu desempenho humildemente no Pico enquanto diretor do Museu do Pico. É o prazer e o gosto de sentir que longe, muito longe de casa, uh, no outro lado do mundo, uh, existe um povo, um povo americano e um povo açoriano que se juntou a esse povo americano e que juntos fizeram uma página gloriosa da história da avaliação no mundo. E, e portanto, é sempre uma, uma grande emoção. Uh, estou aqui, mas sinto a saudade, e a saudade do meu pai, a saudade da minha mãe, a saudade de todos aqueles que no mar e em terra, naquelas ilhas muito distantes e muito longínquas, no meio do Atlântico Norte, no arquipélago dos Açores, um pouco numa região ultraperiférica para a Europa, aqueles que durante quase seis séculos, quase 600 anos, de forma dura, de forma resiliente, de forma apaixonada, amaram aquelas ilhas, saíram delas, alguns saíram e nunca mais voltaram, muitos foram voltando, saindo e voltando. Mas há quem diga que a gente nunca sai completamente do sítio onde nasceu, do berço, do berço, 
do leite materno. E, portanto, é, estar aqui hoje, no meio de um lugar muito especial, que é New Bedford, um lugar mítico, um lugar de referência no, no mundo, como a grande capital da avaliação, da avaliação americana e da avaliação mundial, isso é, sem dúvida, um, um, para além da questão científica, da questão técnica, da questão histórica, da questão antropológica que liga as duas margens do continente, com o Atlântico no meio, mas é a sensação que estamos num sítio longínquo, mas que ao mesmo tempo é nosso. A América é mais importante para nós do que a Europa. Nós somos europeus do ponto de vista da geografia, do ponto de vista histórico, daquilo que é a nossa origem profunda. Nós viemos de um país, nós somos de um país, Portugal, que tem quase 900 anos de história. Faltam-nos muito poucos anos para fazermos nove séculos de história. Mas nós nunca fomos europeus. Fomos europeus por condição histórica, mas nunca fomos europeus por condição emocional, afetiva e quase sociológica, social. A América é mais importante para nós nos Açores do que a Europa. Por isso, estar na América é estar num sítio que também, de certo modo, mesmo não estando aqui, é sempre nosso. Muito obrigado por estarem aqui. É um prazer. Good evening. Welcome. Thank you so much for your presence. It's an honor, a great satisfaction, a great pleasure, and enormous happiness to be here at the World Long Course, Whaling Capital, New Bedford, at one of the most famous and prestigious museums of world whaling, New Bedford Whaling Museum. As Portuguese, Azorian, and Americans holding hands, embracing each other in our common history. We celebrate the sea, the whaling, the immigration, the great whales, the past, the present, and the future of these brotherly people. Quieting Fernando Pessoa, a great poet, a great Portuguese poet, said, My homeland is the Portuguese language, but when in Rome, be a Roman, it's my understanding that I should make an effort to speak in English. It's necessary, it's needed. I promise to try, but a quality will always fall short from ideal, and for I apologize in advance. Thank you all. Thanks. <laughs> Miss Amanda McMullen, President and CEO of New Bedford Whaling Museum, thank you for the invitation, relevant support, and generosity. Brown University, represented by Professor Unésimo Teutónio de Almeida, thank you, Professor, for the invitation relevant support and generosity. Mr. João Pinheiro, my friend, their son, Vitor, stay here. I know it, I know. Vitor, Vitor, over there. <laughs> Mr. João Pinheiro, my friend, thank you for the relevant relevant and strategic support. Who could, be, who could not be here today, he is in Pico. But in Fayal, Pico Fayal, always in Fayal, Pico, Pico, Pico Fayal. But he stay here, stay here in his spirit and my soul. With us, Vitor. Mr. José Ribeiro, my colleague, my friend, my old friend of Liceu da Horta and Fayal. My friend, thank you 
for your relevant and strategic support. Thanks for all, my friends. <clears throat> Ms. Oger Perry and Ms. Beatriz Oliveira, New Bedford Whaley Museums, thank you for relevant support. Greetings and compliments. Azoria Maritime Heritage Society, I also need to recognize an amazing group of people in New Bedford that works hard for keeping our Azorian boats and our whaling culture very much alive. They create a strong bond between New Bedford and Pico and Fayal through people and through three Azorian whale boats. Thank you, Azorian Maritime Heritage Society. President. <clears throat> President Norbert Ray, Lara Arrington, and Sara Quintal. Mr. José Soares, my family, my long family, but my family, yet my, my, one person that I love a lot, one person that I cannot forget for, for his excellent support in the whaling culture in New Bedford and Pico is very important in New Bedford and in Yezers and Pico. Thank you, José Suárez for all of you make for us. Thank you. <clears throat> Political, civilian, military, and re re religious authorities, my friends, cultural brothers. Our history was written in the sea. The sea is worldwide known as the main Portuguese trademark. In the Azorian context, Pico Island gathers an impressive amount of material and immaterial remains associated with the whaling culture, reaching much beyond a sheer commercial perspective. In the Azores, whaling culture should be understood as a bonding agent and contemporary economy, defending in keeping local uniqueness, but at the same time, fulfilling its universe call. No other creature is part of human imaginary in such intense and lasting way as the whale. Mysterious and mystical animals, whales have inspired tales, terrors, greed and fascination. They've always been present in literature and the arts, inhabiting our dreams and our ancestral fears. Whales have helped to create a way of life marked by an amazing survival power and a people made of heroes, an epic journey in all the seas of the world. Whaling was the most amazing fishing activity that humankind practiced on the planet. During the 18th and 19th centuries, Zarians took part in long course Anglo-American whaling. From the middle of the 9th century on, we brought sedentary and coastal whaling into the Azores. Such whaling industry survived in the Azores in a unique way worldwide until 1984, but the relationship built between humankind and whales hasn't been lost. In the 1980s and 1990s, the ecological appreciation of cetaceans 
and the musicalization of Wailon culture have, have marked this orient identity. The sperm whales was reborn as a cult object, emblem and symbol of the Azores. No other place was able to transform its whaling tra tradition into such a rich heritage. In Pico Island, as in no other place in the world, is made a combination between history and biology and ecology. Memory merges with deep nature, with the sea and the great whales in a sacred liturgy. Piku has an open window on the sea. Regarding this as a kind of art of the world, the bio biological source of everything. The Azores and Pico, in particular, have become one of the great international whaling imaginary expl explanation, explaining, sorry, platforms. The Azores became part of the international history of whaling in the mid 18th century. It was started when English and American whaling ships, mostly from New Bedford and Nantucket, sailed to the seas of the Azores to hunt whales. At that time, ships arrived at the port of Arta in the island of Fayal to rest, obtain water, stock up in food, on food, receive orders, repairs, and recruit men. All this movement did not go unnoticed by the Icelanders, mainly the younger ones who were fascinated by the American dream. After a while, they began recruiting cruise members from Fayal, Flores, Peak, and other islands. These were the first whalers from the Azores. The names of, of thousands of Azorean whalers were recorded in the ship's logbooks and in other whaling documentation. Many of the captains of these American whaling ships came from the island of Fayal, Flores, and Pico. No small number of these whaling seamen belong to the Azores, where the halt were bound and taken. Whales frequently touch to augment their crews from the hardy peasants of those rocky shores. Herman Melville, Moby Dick, 1851. Whale ships at Charter Bay, Fayal. I like this atmosphere. The return of some of these men to the Azores by the middle of the ninth century was the decisive in the introduction of local whaling, sedentary and seasonal, then from small ports. Whaling was an economic activity practiced on all, in, on all the islands, but it reached its maximum expression in Pico. For over more than a century, generation of whalers perfect the art of whaling in the Azores. On land, the sperm whales were cut up and their blubber was melted down in large cauldrons. Galeta do Nusquim. My land, my love. 
Santa Cruz das Ribeiras, Ribeiras. Before the storm. Cais do Pico. Além de José Guilherme Ribeiro. Feial, Capelo, Wailing Lookout, Post, Pico, Lages do Pico, Francisco Barreto, For over more than a century, generation of whalers perfected the art of whaling in the Azores. On land, the sperm whales were cut up and their blubber were melted down in large cauldrons. In 1940s and 50s, modern industrial factories appeared for the production of oil, flowers, and other sperm whale products.
After the end of whaling in the late 1980s, an important heritage remained. Whaling became an activity to remember, recognized and explained in museums. The Whaling Industry Museum, the first public industrial museum in the Azores, located in the most important whaling factory of the archipelago, is the only museum structure of the Azores. Alongside the Whalers Museum in Laje do Pico, that can be a space to offer a global vision and explanation of the island's whaling industry. São Roque, Cais do Pico, the most important factory in the Azores. The end. The end? <laughs> Not the end, but the end of the factory. Museums. Since the end of, of whale hunting in 1984, among others, whaling vessels, whale boats, and towing motor, motor boats ran the risk of being lost. From 1988, Han measures were taken aiming at their preservation and reuse. The government, with the population effort, established establish an heritage protection program, but before the museum, the Whalers Museum in Lage. More. Fast, the time is, it's, it's run too fast. More, to win the Leeuwen Telm, Pins. Our country, our village. Oilers Museum. Oilers Museum. The same architecture of New Bedford, and New England. The architect Paul Gouveia inspired in, in this town. It is, it's all, all the same in New Bedford. Temporary exhibitions. Welling Industry Museum, the great factory transformed in a museum. Great museum. Memorial, memorial. Memorial. We have no time. 
for explaining this. It's a man information, technical information. The boilers. The old new, the old Bedford. Temporary exhibition, gallery. The master is dead, Jean Albert Saint Amaro. Jean Silveira Tavares. It's famous in New, in New Bedford. <laughs> famous. He's a great man. I know what he means, he's dead. Pontas Negras, Ribeiras, Pico. Manuel Monteiro, Piedade, Pico. Manuel Ramos, and Sun, Son Rock, Pico. The great masters. Regatas in, in Sweden. Um Canal Peak for y'all between two islands, Pico and St. George, sorry. Galeta de Mesquim. São Mateus Pico. Até bom Jesus, milagroso. The whale watching in Pico, lives of the Pico, so many people, thousand and thousand. Procession. Since the end of whale hunting in 1984, among others, whaling vessels, whale boats, and towing motor boats ran the risk of being lost. From 1988 on, measures were taken aiming at their preservation and reuse. The government 
with the population efforts established in the Heritage Protection Program. In 2012, 63 oil boats and 14 speedy boats were classified. Among, among these, 42 whale boats and 11 speedy boats have already been restored. With, with such movement, shipbuilding was reborn, tradition know-how was recovered, the activities linked to the sea were promoted, and the relationship between communities and whale culture grew. Regattas in the Azorian whale boats date back from the whaling period. These were carried out in some whaling ports, always associated with festive and commemorative moments. The royal visit to Orta in 1901 was celebrated with a whale boat regatta, which validated the relevance of this competition. Nowadays, they are marked big by strong culture, sporty, playful tourists, and environment aspects, being a trademark of the Azores worldwide. The, these regattas are carried out extensively in Pico and Fayal Island. In 2016, a regional championship was created involving all Azorean islands. On international level, besides taking place in the Azores, they also happen here in New Bedford, celebrating the historical relationship between American and Azorean whaling. The Azorean, the Azorean whale boat has been represented in national and European contexts in exhibition, trade fairs, and regattas. The, mem the memorial of the whaler in San Roque do Pico, the memorial of the whaling and the whalers in Laje do Pico to great sculptures, the same, the same memorial with Pico, the last, the last slide. I playing very, very, very times this form. It signifies that the the um, the wailing is dead, but the wailing culture is not dead. It's alive. It's alive forever in our hearts and our souls. Thank you very much. Thank you. José Guilherme teach me, but I forgot. <laughs> Uh, I would, I would invite it two great musician, American musician, is the celebrating the union and the connection of the American music and the world and the ethnic traditional music of Jesus with us, with with my son, two great musicians of, of America, of New Bedford. Thank you. You can go with me? Thank you. Now, I, now, you know, you know. I'm nervous. I'm an old man, sorry. I'm an old man. I'm going to play two or three uh, songs with my son.
remember the past in the culture. Shuva, Ray. Ray, Shuva. Ray. It's a father. It's a typical Portuguese song in Lisbon. Father. Pois as bolgas que há de vir Não deixam de saudar Só as andanças que dão Ou fazem sorrir Há gente que fica na história da história da gente e outras que quem nem o nome vem para nos ouvir são emoções que dão vida à saudade que traz Aquelas que tive contigo e acabei por perder Há dias que marcam a alma e a vida da gente E aquele em que tu me deixaste não posso esquecer A chuva molhava-me o rosto, gelado e cansado. As ruas que a cidade tinha, já eu percorrera. Ai, meu choro de moço perdido, gritava a cidade. Do amor sob a chuva, há instantes morrerá. A chuva, ouvir e calor, eu cedo a cidade e as que ela bate no vidro. Trazendo a saudade A chuva Molhava-me o rosto Chorava e cansado As ruas Que a cidade tinha Já eu percorrerá Waters, 
the Abbe and Jesus a typical song for the, the words in the world. It's Boi the bowl of the sea in English. The bowl of the sea.
Thank you. I follow, I follow that, that poetry very connect with our land or highlands. Adeus parceiros das falhas Dos copos e das noitadas Adeus sombras da cidade Adeus languor das guitarras Canto de esperanças frustradas Alvorada de saudade Meu coração como louco Quer desgarrar no peito Transforma em soluço a dor Para ti é morrer um pouco A alma do céu do jeito Inspirar dentro de nós em pedaços como aves que se não cansam ilusões esparsas no ar partir este entre os braços aos sonhos que não se alcançam cujo destino a ficar Para fazer 
que era pé Esta distância achava por mim Que me dá só um pão Daquilo que é Está tão triste 
a melão O seu grau foi-se embora Não me vejo como o rato Por isso é que eu 
Muito obrigado, Sr. Manuel Costa. Vamos uh, daqui a pouco uh, comer e beber, mas uh, por enquanto o Sr. Manuel Costa quer apresentar umas prendas para umas poucas pessoas. Só senta só prenda. um pouco. Eu gostava que aqui uh, no palco pudesse aparecer, se fazem favor, uh, penso que é uh, o Museu de New Bedford. Emily? O Museu de New Bedford, a Universidade de Brown, o Sr. João Pinheiro, o filho estava ali, mas já não está. O Sr. João Pinheiro. As ofertas do Museu do Pico, institucionais. O José Guilherme Ribeiro. O Sr. José Soares. O Sr. José Soares, the Azorian Maritime Heritage Society. for when you see it. 